we're going to go over adding content to your website using the Image Manager and File Manager. In order to upload an image to the web or a file, you will need to use the Image Manager under Content Image Manager. When the Image Manager opens up, you will be given a file list of the files that are in your Uploads Images folder. Currently, we have just the logo.gif image. You have the option to upload a file or create a new folder to put your file in. Uploading a file to the Image Manager is just like attaching an email. You're going to click the Browse button and browse to where your image is located. It's usually easiest to put it on your desktop, as that's the place where the image manager usually looks first. So we'll select my Aduco um, Phoenix here, and we're going to click the Open button. And once we're sure that the file path is right, we'll select Send. You'll now see that your image is uploaded into your file list. If you wanted to add it to your gallery folder, you could just cl click the gallery folder and then add it there. Now, in the Image Manager, you also have the option to delete or edit an existing image. Obviously, delete is pretty self-explanatory, so we'll just go over the edit function. So you're going to click the pencil icon, and the editor will pop up in the center of your screen. Now, your options are crop, resize, rotate, measure, to change the measure marker, and to finally save your image. So in order to crop, you click the crop, and you can either manually enter in your dimensions or you can use the crop tool to pick an area that you'd like to crop your image to. Once you've got the correct cropping, you're going to hit the check mark. If it's incorrect, you can hit the cancel to undo. Okay, if I was done now, I would click the save button and save my image, but I'll show you the resize, rotate, and measure functions. If you wanted to make your image smaller, you do resize. You always want to constrain your proportions so that you're not stretching an image horizontally or vertically. If you didn't want to constrain your proportions for some reason, you can unclick the constrained proportions here or check the link. So we're going to make sure that anything that we do to the width, the height is adjusted proportionately. So for instance, if we had a space that we wanted to be 100 pixels wide, then it would adjust the height for us to be 117, and it'll show you a representation uh, using the marker of how big that's going to be. If you've got a darker image and you can't see the black outline of the marker, you can switch and toggle its color to white so that you can see it. So now that we like the size of our image, we're going to hit the check mark, and it'll resize it for us. Again, if we're finished, we could save now. If you wanted to rotate your image, say you uploaded an image that you took sideways with your camera and you wanted it to be vertical, you could choose to flip the image horizontally or vertically, or simply rotate it at a specific angle, like 90 degrees counterclockwise, 90 degrees clockwise, or a full 180. So we'll do uh, 180 degrees, and we'll hit the check mark. So that flips our image upside down. You use the measure tool when you're not exactly sure how much space you want to take off of, how many pixels you'd like to take off of your image via cropping or resizing. So if you click on the image and drag the line out, you'll be given dimensions up top of how long, how far on the y-axis that is, how, it, how far down it starts. The y-axis is vertical, the x-axis is horizontal, so we're 53 pixels down on the y-axis. It'll give you an idea of the width. Right now it's telling you that that's 98 pixels. If we did it in an angle, it would also let us know the angle of our line. So that's just for the sake of, of knowing how, how large something is or how much of a size difference you need to change something to. So we're going to clear that. And again, if that marker were on a dark image and you couldn't see it, you would just simply click here to toggle the color of it back and forth. So now that we've finished making all our edits to our image, we're going to save our image. Now up top, it'll give you the file name. It will always append a number onto what the image was originally called so that you're not overwriting your original image. If you wanted to, you could simply delete the underscore one and it would overwrite the original image that you had. But we're just going to leave it the way that it is. Now it'll default to the image format of JPEG. You can also switch it to a PNG a GIF, 
and you can switch the quality of the JPEG. You usually want to stay with JPEG high. It'll compress it to save a little bit of file size, but it won't look too bad when you save the file. If you go too low, your image will start to look pixelated. So we'll select JPEG high, which is a quality of 85. You could also move the slider up and down if you wanted to change the quality that way. So we'll just go back there, set it to 85 again. And now that we're finished, we're going to hit the check mark to save it. An alert box will pop down to let you know that it's been saved, and you just hit OK and close your editor. Now when you refresh your image manager, you'll see that your new image is in your file list. Now when you're creating a page, it'll be available in your browser to add to your content. Now, we'll briefly touch on the file manager since you'll probably need to use this a little less than the image manager. The file manager gives you direct, ac direct access to the uploads folder as opposed to the image manager which drops you in the uploads images folder. So you can see here that you can see the images folder. You also have some access to some template files. Now this is your file view. If you wanted to upload a file you would click the upload files tab and you can do multiple files at once. You can also upload a zipped file and unpack it once it's uploaded. Under settings, if you, want, if you have the proper user permissions, you can, you can enable advanced mode, which will let you gain access to the whole system, so you'll be able to go one file level up above the uploads. It's generally recommended that you stay out of the system files, but by all means, you, know, you can always allow yourself to do that. Once you've enabled advanced mode, you can also show yourself hidden files. These are your htaccess files, um, any thumbnailing files that start with a, a period that hides them from the system, but the system uses them for um, specifications. You can show thumbnails of the image files if they exist. Um, you can change your icon size to large or small. You can add more upload boxes or have less upload boxes if you like. You can change the thousand delimiter to have either a period, a comma, a space, or no delimiter between the thousand mark. And you want to leave your permission style at 775. So once you're done, you would save your settings, and then you could go back to your file view or upload more files. 